Right, welcome to another great Carl Basic tutorial. This is for release candidate 39. This is going to show you the PKS capability. So I'm going to go through quite quickly. I'm not going to hang around. So overview of this release. This is a release that supports PKS XC8 toolchain and PitKit 4 programmers. The PitKit 4 program is just a nice to have. This is very much based around the PICAS HCX toolchain. I'll explain that in, in further as we go through. I'm going to talk you through the installation and configuration changes. So what is PICAS? They recently released a new assembler um, to replace um, existing tools for their PIC and AVR microcontroller devices and that impacts us as a toolchain. The new, the new compiler is called MPLAB XC8 PIC Assembler and it's meant to replace the very old um, MP as an assembler. This is commonly called PIC-AS. It's called PIC-AS by Microchip. So why do we need to um, support GreatCal Basic? Well, it's a teaching aid. There are many people who use GreatCal Basic as a teaching aid and that comes to an end if we don't get PIC-AS working. It's good for debugging. If you have a debug or deep problem, yeah, you do need to have PKS. You cannot do it any longer using MPLAB. You won't get any support from microchip as you go forward. I can, you know, as of uh, this project started, I've been able to submit code direct to microchip to get support for problems. They'll do that in PKS. They won't do that in M um, in MPASM. And MPASM is not supported by many of the new chips, so you won't get any support as you go forward. So we're a little bit caught between um, the devil and the deep blue sea where we need uh, PKS to get support and we need, because we need to support the product ourselves. So we're stuck. So we needed to add PKS support. So let me just go into some, make sure we understand what this does. Remember, Great Car Basic is open source. We do PIC, AVR and LGT microcontrollers. We now support the PKS compiler. Well, you, can be able to, you should be able to do this across all the platforms in terms of um, Windows, uh, Linux, Mac, and uh, Pi, because it is a cross-platform solution. Now, quick overview of how it's all, how the tool chain works. Okay, so I'm just going to bring up a pen, uh, ballpoint pen. We take uh, this is the tool chain. I call it the core compiler, and this is all within the executable that sits out there today. We take your source code and we put, we, we suck in some um, libraries as um, the core libraries or user specific libraries and we pre-process those, pre-process those files for syntax and other um, aspects that are essential to ensure that your, your code is valid. We then put it into a code translator, and that code translator is a neutral code translator, and it uh, it does a lot of optimization in there to improve performance, sort out your memory, sort out many of the core components. But it is not the assembly language; it is it is a hybrid uh, code translator. We then take that through an assembler, and through the assembler, we start to generate something that's very specific for your chip, and that chip it could be a PIC, it could be an LGT or a, an AVR, and we create an ASM file, or we have created a, an ASM file, and that's an output, and you can take that file, and you could put that through either um, MPASM, or you could take that through um, Atmel Studio to generate a hex. It, it worked very well, and that was very good for debugging and for teaching data, etc. We also, at the same point, we output some reports, um, text and HTML, so you could look at them. Okay. We then took that through uh, what was called GC ASM through a linker, and we produced the hex file as, a, as an absolute machine code hex file. It was targeted for your PIC or AVR or LGT, and you can do that um, within the configuration that we've been shipping out for 13 years. And that's really worked very well, and that's where we have to make a change for PIC-AS. So with PIC-AS, we have to tell the compiler um, to go elsewhere to do the linking to generate the hex file. You can still produce a hex file inside of Great Car Basic, but to get the PIC-AS AS to work with um, the microchip tools, I'm just showing you how that works. Well, we take your same source, we take your same libraries, we take it through the preprocessor, code translator, and assembler, and we still produce the ASM file. 
we still do that. We're going to do that and continue to do that. But we also produce what's called a .s file. And that .s file is targeted for the microchip um, PIKS and MPLAB IDE. It still produces the output files. It actually produces um, exactly the same files. So those, this is the new file .s. Well, that .s is then passed by the um, by Great Car Basic into the linker called PKS.exe. It then produces a machine file, and that machine file is very different. Sorry, is is the same as what we produce in Great Car Basic, but the source file, the .s file, can be read within. Uh, MPLAB IDE, so that you can do the education, the teaching, the debugging, etc, etc. And that's what we're going to look at today. So it's essentially you understand that this is not something that was, you know, it's not a radical change. It is, it's, it's a change on this output here. So we have an ASM file, and now we have a code translator built in to produce the .s file. That's the change. And that's enabling then PKS. So what I'm going to ask you, how are you going to install this is quite important. You don't need to do this if you don't want to use PKS, but it's going to lead to, it, it's good to know this. So back up your old installation, back up a file called use.ini. Take it out, take a copy of it, put it somewhere else. It might have programmer configurations, etc. If you do not replace it, you will not get a hex file, regardless. Okay, you need to... At this release, we are going to, I'm going to start, you know, the next release of uh, RC40 is I'm just going to replace the use.ini and you're going to have to reprogram every time because it's becoming a real pain. Rename your use.ini. Mine happened to be in the directory called RC38. Find use.ini to use.old. Then install the release. Okay. Install Great Car Basic. Okay. Install it. All right. Okay, let's install it here. Now I can do that right now. Look at my desktop. Yeah, you get the. Yeah, you get that, 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 that. You get all the regular stuff. I'm going to install it in D colon. A D colon drive. It doesn't matter where you put it. Okay, um, I'm not hung up on it. It's up to you where you put these things. Um, but I'm, I have a number of installations, so I'm just going to kind of trying to zoom in on my desktop here, okay? There we go, look. That's uh, zoomed in on my desktop. There we go. There's the installer, and I'll bring it out like that. So I've got it in a slightly different directory. I'm just going to accept the folder names, and I'm going to accept all the defaults except associate with GCP, only because... Um, I need to do that okay you don't need to do that just accept it next 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 install everything that's going to take a few seconds to install that and then it's going to open up the ide as it was and i'm just going to show you that it generates valid code all right we're walking that installation whilst it's doing that we'll go back to powerpoint so once we, once we, I'll come back to this uh, slide in a moment. Once we've actually seen it all installed, okay. So there we go. It's just completing the installation. Now I put it in a clean folder, so I don't have to rename my used any. You do. There we are. I'm in. I'm in there, and I can generate some code. Right? I just generate the code, generate the hex, and it will work. Okay, it will work. It will generate a hex file. I'm going to change that to a 18f16q41. I'm going to try and program it, and it will fail. Do you know why? Because I don't have my programmer installed. So I'm just going to very quickly install my programmer. Okay. I have got PicKit Plus software, so I'm going to copy that into my new installation directory in the PicKit Plus directory. I can do that in the background. I have just copied this file into here. Programmer preferences. Um, PicKit 4 is there now. 
I ought to put my own software near the top, really. Here we go. Put pick kit plus at the top. Press OK. Flash. And it's now programming it. And it's done it. I have an LED that is flashing. I don't have a camera out there today. Um, but um, if I play, change that to C.0, I have... I, I will... Um, have a LED flashing on my PCB. So that ch has not changed. Nothing has changed. I have an LED that's flashing. Back to PowerPoint. How do you enable PIC AS? Well, you're going to have to install the compiler. You're going to have to then change the use.ini, and then you can actually use it inside of MPLAB. So, how are you going to do that? You can go to Google and you can type in microchip xc8 download or take this URL. And I've done that already. So, here it is on my desktop here now. Let me just select my desktop. There's my desktop. I'm going to select the compiler and you need this extra compiler. So, select downloads and documentation, compiler downloads. And here it is. It's called XCA Compiler 2.3. That contains the software that you need. I've installed it. Download it and install it. If you download and install it, it will put it in a specific directory. Please note that directory. You will need that. Whilst I was here, I will. Um, whilst we're here, we'll, we'll do something different. So I've already installed the PKS. 2.3 okay i should i just do it just to show it to you i guess i should 67 megabytes we don't need to see a 67 megabyte download do we well it's only 14 seconds but it will take some time to install um so i've already installed it assume that i've done that okay and you will have to do the same okay so what i'm going to do is just open that when it starts and i'm going to cancel it just to get the install directory okay getting the install directory is critical to the success of PKS great here it is full install and it is not the huge huge MP lab X thing okay it's a smaller compile okay it's a smaller tool chain install there we go accept the agreement except free and there is the, the install directory that we're going to need okay all right, so that says program microchip XC8 2.31. I'll just get out. Okay, back to PowerPoint. What are we doing? I've installed it. I've got to walk. I've got to update use.ini. So let's have a look at um, back in my sin right here. If I go to my desktop, if only I could find it. There it is there. Okay, use.ini. The way I get at it, the way I do it, because you need to find it, is file, new, browse templates. And that will always get you to the installation directory. You won't make a mistake. It's in this directory, great cow basic directory, and there's a file in there called use.ini. Crack it open. In here, you are looking for the line called assembler you can comment it out you can do what you like with it but you need to take make another version and put in it pick a dash pick dash as and then comment that one out and you will see that there is a tool down here called pick as let's make it the same case so that it looks quite nice and in here is the installation directory for pick as that's where you need to put it. You need to ensure that the first part of this, 2.31, is the correct file. I can't, that's the, you have to do that yourself. I cannot automate that. That is important. Do not change the parameters. That is extremely long, um, an extremely long uh, parameter. You can have a play with that. I'm not going to bother explaining it. Okay, but I've changed it from GCASM to pick AS save now when i compile the program it's going to fire up the pick as compiler 
and you barely see the difference. I'm going to hex and make, and it flashed up on the screen there, assembly program for PKS, assemble successful for PKS, and it's done it. I have a flashing LED. So what it's generated, if I look in the directory, we working, sort by date, look at all files. There's a file called first start sample asm and a .s file. I can open that and it is a different format. It's an assembler file that looks like an assembler file, but it's intended for the PKS compiler. If you open it again, you can see the old AS one there next to it. And you'll see differences. You can actually do a compare. It's um, you can actually do um, if I do a open again, I can do a compare between the two. Diff, I can diff the two, and this is a differential tool. And you can see there's a lot of differences. Where the yellow is is all the differences. Okay, so you can learn. Old PKS, PKS on, on the left with new PKS on the right. And you can see the differences. Okay. So, from a usability standpoint, we are now generating a hex file via PKS. Fact. Same source, different hex file. It's generated by a different method. And how did we do that? We changed the INI file used or any was changed okay let's have a look at why we're doing this okay back to powerpoint i'm going to create an mpland project and we're going to walk the project we've just created okay i'm just going to do it very quickly um won't take many seconds but you need to see it so i'm going to power up in my mplab 5.4 Four, five. It will power up. I'm going to create a project and I'm going to insert my new .s file into that project. How do I do that? It's extremely simple. Okay. We have. This is. Um, as you can see, this is um, there we go. I can put them side by side. I think I can get them side by side. There we go. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to delete anything that's here before. With a delete. Good file, new, new project. It's a standalone project. Next. Type in the pick file name that you've generated your source for. Mine up to be a 16 and 18F16Q41. Click that. Uh, take the simulator. Take the simulator. Take the simulator. Let me just see if I can zoom in on, on that. Can I zoom in on that tool? Yeah, there we go. That's a bit better. Take the simulator here. Click pick AS and then take the 2.31, which you've just installed. Give the project a name. How about we call it 18F16Q41 dash pick AS. And it will create a project as my main project. On the left, as you can see, I've got my um, files here, which I was looking at previously. I'm just going to take a copy of the directory um, where I've installed it. So here we go. Uh, a couple of things you need to do just to make it work. Um, I'm going to add a source file. Source file. I've clicked on source file. Add a new item. 
and I'm going to type in the directory, which is the demo folder, and then I'm just going to find my new .s file, and here it is, first sample .s, select it. End of program. That's all you have to do. Make it bigger. Press F11, and it will compile it, and it's successfully compiled the Great Cow Basic Source. It's done it. It truly has done it. Now, if you want to walk the code to see how it works, you can go debug, discrete debugger operation, build for debugging. It rebuilds it. Debugger, discrete debugger operation, launch debugger main program. And now you're sitting inside of with this green line inside the assembler that's been generated the pick as assembler that's been generated so i can now walk that code i'm now walking that code i can then look at registers so if i look at if i add a variable in here and i add in uh, rc0 um, sfr Global symbols. I thought there was one called um, might be ports, might be port C. There you go, port C. I'm going to run the debugger. Keep running it for us. We can see it step through the program, and it will return back to the main code. And it's just started to to, to work on the um, lat C. And there's a wait. I'm just going to I'm just going to run that code is doing a hundred millisecond wait so the compiler has just done it the uh, the uh, simulator it's going to set the pin off it's going to wait 900 milliseconds so i'm going to i'm going to run it to this point here and if you look down here in the values you can see a port c is set to zero now it's set to one because it's toggling the led so if I if I set a breakpoint here, <laughs> and a breakpoint here, I can run that program, and every time the program stops at that red line, you'll see that the um, LED, the LED state will change here. So it's one. So this is zero, one, and zero. So we can now walk the code and debug code, teach people how exactly this code works, because in the debugger in here, you can also look at the program memory, and you can actually see the raw assembler inside of here. And so if we walk the code, we can see as it steps through at the top, we can see at the bottom, this is the disassembled program. So we can walk the code nice and slowly exactly to see what it's doing. So purpose of this was to teach you what to, how to install it. So we've done that. We've created that project and walked the debugger and that's why we did it. So install MPLabX. Yeah, you've got to do that. That's, that's if that's what you're doing. You've got to create that project. It's very simple to create that project as I've just done it. So, Great Card Basic and MP Lab X with PKS is a huge step forward. Um, it's needed so that you can have a product or, or a project that's actually going into the future because uh, we can no longer, we couldn't support the um, chip I've just tested, for instance, without PKS. There is no way I could debug stuff. Uh, pretty well messed up. I can't use. Um, MP ASM for that. So you can create code in Great Card Basic. You can create a .s file. You can take that .s file and you can put it into into MP LabX and learn. Or you can just ignore this and just carry on as you are using the internal engine of Great Card Basic. You can carry on using exactly this, and you don't need to make any changes. It's only when you have a problem, you're going to have to crack open, pick AS, 
to do it like this. So with that, I'll call that a day. Enjoy.